In this audio recording, I'll be doing a discussion of what's in the syllabus and some of the information that's listed in the syllabus to include uh, your course schedule. So the first half will be about the syllabi and the grading system within the syllabi for Social Work 611. Then I will do another part that takes a look at the course schedule and what's in the course schedule. So the syllabus basically is for Social Work 611, uh, legal and ethical issues in clinical social work. Of course, you have your course description of the course, uh, so that should uh, take care of your perception about the course. In addition to that, you have the prerequisite. Of course, the prerequisite is just your acceptance in the program in which all of you have already been accepted in the program. And then you have the professor's information, my name, Dr. Ronald Dickerson. You have my phone number uh, also listed there to include my office number. Uh, and I do have office appointment, but it's basically made by you calling me and setting up an appointment with me uh, regarding registration or any concerns that you may have. The director of the social work master's program is Dr. Uh, Mr. Jackie Puckett. And below that, you have your textbooks that's required for the course. And the textbook Ivy and Ivy is a ebook that's already embedded in Blackboard for you. And of course, you have two other, you have another textbook and then you have an article, uh, which is already uh, supported for you. And you'll see that in Blackboard also. So this is the requirement for text and textbook readings. Uh, you have your method instruction. Of course, this is an online course. Uh, so basically, your attendance within the, the course room is, is necessary. And then you have your statement of uh, expected incoming students competencies uh, for the social work program. You have your social work uh, program standards. Uh, in this master's program, uh, you must maintain a 3.0 or higher. Uh, two C's in the program will basically have you removed from the program. So it's very important for students uh, to do quality work, applying critical thinking, being very thorough with their assignments, and using evidence-based practice to justify uh, what they're saying. It's not about assumption. It's about utilizing evidence-based practice to justify uh, and support your writings. So just just be attentive to those things because it's going to be very important for you to uh, actually have a clear understanding uh, of what you're saying and supporting it with a peer review by article or evidence-based practice. The next section of the syllabus look at uh, learning outcomes and uh, your competencies, your core competencies. In the BSW program before in the syllabi, we would ask you to review your competencies. Well, in the master's program, we're not only asking you to review the competencies, we ask you to have a clear understanding of the competencies and how it applies to each one of the assignments that you're going to be uh, doing in the course. So when you get to feel in relations to doing a learning contract, you're going to list the nine competencies and then you're going to list the behavior that you're going to uh, demonstrate and then you're going to be telling uh, the field instructor what assignments that you're going to be doing to justify meeting those particular competencies. And of course when CSWE comes in and uh, evaluate the program, they may ask you a question. Give me an assignment that you're working in field. I want you to link that assignment to one of your competencies and tell me what's in that competency. So it's important for you to have an understanding of the competencies. I always tell students to print out the competencies and once you print it out, put it in a binder. That way you have something to go back to. Uh, and even when they ask that if it's virtual, uh, if it's face-to-face, uh, -face, it's okay for you to say, I'm doing a biopsychosocial assessment and that is associated with the competencies that look at 
engagement and assessment of individuals and you're going to tell them what competency that is. And then after you tell them that, you're going to say uh, you're going to assess an individual uh, to address any concerns or issues they may have uh, to support their well-being. So if you look at competency one, it talks about demonstrating ethical and professional behavior. And so when you look at that, here are the student learning outcome practice for those behaviors, okay? Making ethical decisions by applying standards to the NSW Code of Ethics. So how are you gonna do that? So in other words, you're gonna be very attentive of uh, the NSW standards. So you're gonna have a, a understanding of self. Uh, and so, this first assignment talks about an email, introductory email, that you're going to be talking about you, okay? And so that's one of the ways to say you're going to meet this particular assignment. But of course, when you get in field, you can't say you're going to do an introductory. You're going to have to say uh, something that you're going to have a clear understanding of self uh, to ensure that uh, you are not... Uh, conflicting bias beliefs on the client. So that might be one way of explaining it in your learning contract. But you'll get more as we go through the program regarding learning contracts and how it applies to it. Some of you may have already gotten emails from the field instructor that asks questions about where you're planning on doing field. Well, she's doing that for two reasons. One, to look at agencies in those areas to address your wants. Two, to make sure that those agencies can meet the qualification uh, in accordance to CSWE where they have a social worker that will be supervising uh, your field experience. So competency is a list of competencies with the assignment that you're going to be doing in this particular course to meet that particular competency. So throughout this listing, some of the competencies. Let's look at uh, competency four where it says engage in practice, inform research, and research inform practice. Well, we have an APA quiz in there that you would have to look at uh, with a textbook uh, online on uh, the APA format style of writing. Uh, in addition to that, you have what we call a pre and post test that you will be taking in this particular, well, you'll be taking in all of the social work master's courses. You will have a pre and post test. And that's just another form of evaluating uh, your understanding of social work practice. So that's going to be important part of it. Uh, it's going to be in Blackboard. So you're going to be taking the quiz in Blackboard. However, the quiz will not be uh, a part of your final course grade. The post and pretest is just an evaluation tool that we're using to evaluate your understanding of social work practice. So it will just be used to evaluate that uh, for CSWE. It will not be used to determine the grade. Uh, for instance, your pretest score may be lower than your post-test, which is expected because starting out, you don't have an understanding of what's completely in all the courses. So how you do on the pretest is not going to be of important value. It'll be more as a baseline. So when you start in the course and at the end of the course, then we expect your post-test score to be much higher. Uh, so there they will be parts in the course where we'll be talking about some of the questions in the pre and post-test where I'll post a discussion for you to give me your understanding of that particular question in the post-test. Uh, so just don't be concerned too much about that. I may even email you uh, the questions for the pre and post test for you to look at later and, and answer and be able to respond in detail with those questions. Uh, once again, the pre and post test will not impact your final course grade. It's just used as an assessment tool to determine your understanding of the, the social work practice. 
Uh, when you look at competency seven, looking at assessing individuals, uh, families and groups, you have two case study assignments that you're gonna be doing in the course. <laughs> so you have competencies that links to the assignment. Of course, class participation in the online program is important. That's you uh, responding to the discussion question, utilizing a thorough critical thinking process uh, and, valid, and validating with, with evidence-based practice. When I say validating, I'm talking about you using peer review articles uh, information from the textbook to support your discussion responses. So be mindful in the master's program, you're gonna find that we're gonna be grading you more intensely uh, with your discussion. So it's important for you to respond to the two learners. Uh, you may wanna to respond to more than two learners and that's encouraging. Uh, but we're looking for that. We're also looking for you to support your response with a peer review article or something from the textbook, excuse me, to include uh, the responses of, of your peers. Failing to do that will result in a lower grade. I'm, I'm, I'm going to repeat that. Failing to do that will result in a lower grade for discussions. So it's important that you apply critical thinking uh, and that you are able to support what you're saying. It's not about your assumptions. Are you putting things in your own word? Uh, it's about you paraphrasing, some, paraphrasing an article uh, information from the textbook. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, you have your policy on professional ethics. Take time to read that to include uh, your professionalism policy in accordance to CSWE. You have your disability section that talks about that. Uh, and then you have your grading policies. Remember I said, if you receive two C's in this program, then you're gonna be asked to withdraw from the program or you're gonna be removed from the program. So it's important for you to maintain a three point average. I'm not saying you have to maintain a four-point four average, but a 3.4 average, uh, a 3.0 average or higher. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, late work policy. So you definitely want to take time to look at that. You may lose points uh, for late work, and that's going to depend on the instructor. If you just failed and didn't do the assignment uh, because you missed it, uh, you felt you didn't need to do it, then your grade will stand. If there's issues that came up that prevent you from doing the work, then I recommend that you email the instructor as soon as possible so that you can come to some kind of agreement regarding the assignment. Also, posting in discussions. Let's say you forgot to reference a discussion. You can't come back and do another discussion and put the reference in because you forgot it. Because once you submit work, your work is submitted based on evaluation. If you didn't have a reference in your initial uh, submission, then it can be considered as plagiarism. So just know that. Remember that you need to reference all of your assignments. I recommend for some of you to look at some of your peers posting. It may give you an idea that, oh, I didn't do that. Does that mean you can come back and do it? No, that means that you evaluate it, and as you move to the next level, you make sure that you do it. Uh, you have your communication policies. Just know that I'm not only your advisor, I want you to see me also as a support person for you. I'm here to uh, address any concerns that you may have regarding the course or your personal life. So just feel uh, free to use me as a support person also. Uh, I recommend you come to me uh, with issues ahead of time. Don't wait till we get to the, to the end of the course and then you tell me some things that you were experiencing. Uh, I'd rather you address the issue as soon as possible with me and then we can discuss about a course of action that you can take to follow. 
Okay, instructors evaluation of students. Here again, we have rubrics in the course that takes a look at the evaluations and you'll see the rubrics as you go through the assignment. As we uh, get into Blackboard, you'll see it even more. Okay, uh, course requirements. So let's, let's move into the next part of uh, this audio recording that takes a look at your assignment. So you have assignment summary here, and this is going to list everything that you have uh, in this particular course. It's also going to be listed the same in Blackboard, and as we go through Blackboard, you'll see that. So if you look at the assignments, you'll see the assignments are on the left, the due dates are in the middle, and the points that are allowed. Now just be mindful, for an assignment that's worth 50 points, then that's 100% for grading system based on how many discussions that you may have. So just have a clear understanding of that. So if you look at each assignment, you want to look at the percentage and what it's actually worth. Okay. So let's go on to the second part of this recording that takes a look at the course schedule. You'll see that you have week one, which starts August 17th and ends on August 23rd, which is a Sunday. So at 11.59 on that Sunday, week one will close. So within week one, you have uh, a chapter re the chapter readings uh, for chapter one. You have the chapter readings for chapter two. And you also have the DSM-5 that takes a look at uh, neurodevelopment. Okay, if you don't have the DSM-5, then you can go online and look up the DSM-5. I recommend that you uh, use cheapbook.com or Amazon and actually go ahead and purchase the DSM-5. Now, there's another textbook called DSM-5 in Action. And the reason I say that is because it kind of breaks it down a little bit better for you and it gives you a better understanding of the DSM-5. Now, how important is the DSM-5? For all of you who are planning on doing licensure, then you're going to need to know the DSM-5. I'm not saying you need to know it in detail, but you're going to need to know some of the information in the DSM-5. So I recommend that you purchase this. Uh, to help you throughout this course because there are other courses that you're going to be using the DSM-5 also. So again, uh, let me just say I recommend that you look for the textbook that says DSM-5 in action. Uh, you can email me and I can give you some more information about this particular text in regards to the publisher. I recommend that you purchase this book. Uh, it will help you not only with licensure, but it will also help you with uh, basically maneuvering some of the courses that's in this program. Uh, I will be trying to give you uh, some other articles along those lines. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't purchase this book. I truly recommend that you do it. Okay, so week one, you have your discussion. So I'm looking for you to answer the discussion in detail. Uh, and you'll see that it's more than one discussion there. So I would, would like for you to answer this in a Word document rather than just typing it in Blackboard like you did in the BSW program. And the reason I said if you do it in the Word document, I can download that Word document and give you feedback within that uh, document uh, and if you post it in Blackboard it, it doesn't allow me to do that uh, so your critique uh, won't help you and, and you'll be looking at me well why did I get a lower grade well I couldn't give you feedback because you posted it in the discussion section of Blackboard rather than doing it in a Word document. So I recommend that you do it in a Word document. I can give you feedback from your writings uh, via grammar errors, via APA style formatting. Uh, so just, just be aware of that. And so if you were to do this first discussion, well, you should start off with 
what the question says in the first discussion and then respond to the question and not just respond to the question and then tell me to figure out what question you're responding to. So uh, any good style of writing would address the question first and then respond to the question below the question. Uh, and so you have two part questions there that you're going to be responding. And some of it actually more than one question. It actually to look at other things also. So again, this is where I say your discussion posts need to exhibit critical thinking. It needs to be very thorough where you're tentative in addressing all the questions. And you need to also uh, support it with evidence-based practice. <clears throat> So as you look at the readings and assignments to the far right, you'll see what you have. You have your introductory email and you have your discussion question. And then you have your understanding of the DSM-5 that looks at neurodevelopment disorder. Week two, you see the similar things there. And in week two, you see that you have your APA quiz. Uh, when we get in Blackboard, Blackboard, I will show you uh, your pre and post quiz and when those are due. <clears throat> uh, so as you go into week two, you'll see week two starts the very next day that week one ends. So I have the dates there and you'll see that week two ends on August 30th. Uh, again, you have chapters one and two and what those exhibit. And then you see your DSM-5 that looks at bipolar disorder. And you'll find that that's also on a certain page within uh, the DSM-5 textbook. Uh, week three follows that where you have week three starting on August 31st and ending on the 6th of September. Within week three, you have a discussion. You have chapters three and four, and then you have your DSM-5 that looks at obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD. Uh, so here again, you can see why it's important uh, and why I recommend that you purchase the DSM-5 in action, uh, where it'll give you a better understanding of what's required. <clears throat> As we go into week four, well, you have a continuation of week three uh, that looks at uh, chapter three and four and the other, the other textbook that you actually have. Uh, so as we look at week four, your week four starts on uh, September 7th and end on the 13th. Uh, and then you have your case study there that you're going to be doing in that session. Uh, you have your discussion question from Ivy and Ivy uh, that takes a look at uh, which, what, how, and why, uh, and could questions would you ask when interviewing. I also supplied some handouts for you on the Getting Started page that would help you with this process also. Just know that your initial post in the discussion is due on Thursday and your response to two peers is due on Sunday, no later than 11.59. Feeling to do that would result in a lower grade in your discussions. So you have your, your chapter readings uh, from both textbooks uh, that you need to be looking at when you look at uh, your reading. So it's, it's required that you uh, have an understanding of both textbooks. Okay, week five will start on September 14th and, and then end on the 20th of September. And so within week five, you have chapter six, seven, nine, and 10. Uh, of both textbooks for this particular course that you have to look at. And of course, you have your Ivy and Ivy discussion questions where you have two questions that you have to respond to. And then to the far right, you have an article that you have to read. Uh, and then you have your client feedback note that you would have to do along with your discussion question. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, week six will start on September 21st and end on the 27th of September. With the net, you have your chapters readings and you have your discussion questions. 
uh, into the far right. It gives you your chapters per textbook that you're going to be utilizing the readings. And then you have another one of your assignment, media, myths, and reality paper that you would have to do. You have your DSM-5 looks at disruptive impulsive control and conduct disorder. You have your DSM-5 that's going to take a look at substance related and addictions disorder. <coughs> so again, uh, you see how important the DSM-5 is going to help you. I'm going to be honest with you, the, the regular DSM-5, uh, it's a little difficult to understand and find things when you're looking at it. But if you get the, the DSM-5 in action uh, book, it'll, it'll give you a better understanding of what you're looking at when we look at the DSM-5. Week 7, again, you have when week 7 starts. Uh, and then you have also your... Uh, chapter readings in your assignment to the right. In week eight, you have a similar uh, <clears throat> chapter readings when week eight start and the discussion that you're going to be doing. Uh, just know that in Blackboard with all the assignments, uh, it's going to be an, a sample assignment for you to look at in each one of it. And then also in the course schedule, you'll see similar things. Like for instance, uh, course requirements and assignments. And it's gonna be discussion about each one. So it's a sample of your introduction email uh, that you're gonna do in the first week. You have information about the APA quiz. Uh, and so uh, it talks a little bit about you utilizing Purdue OWL to help you with the APA quiz. Now, the APA quiz will be a part of your final grade, but the pre and post test will not. Okay. As you look at your case study, it's a format example here for your case study in APA format where it gives you an example of the running head. But when you go to the Getting Started page in Blackboard, I have a template already there for you. <coughs> so you got your case study uh, that you're going to look at, and it talks a little bit about uh, the case study in itself. Uh, so this is just an example of an APA format and how it should be utilized. Okay, uh, you have another case study that you're going to be looking at uh, in assignments that's listed there for you. And then you have your client feedback note. Uh, basically below that is an example of what that should be looking like. Uh, client feedback note, you, you have to have your, your counselor name, which would be your name. Uh, you can put John Doe. I recommend that you just put your name. Your client, you know, which is a fictitious name, you need to make sure that's there. You definitely have to make sure that the date of the session is there. And so you're going to be responding to the questions below. What are my feelings about the session? Okay, what did I learn? Uh, what I did not like. Also, uh, what I wish would have happened, okay? And so you're going to be responding to those questions as you look at that. You have the information about your media myth and reality uh, rough draft assignment, and it gives you some response that you're going to be looking at, your title page, your demographic page, your interviewing questions, uh, the body of the paper uh, pages to include references. Uh, you also have different things you're going to be responding, media, myths, reality, and then you're going to have your personal reaction. So it's going to give you some information about how to go about doing that. And the rubrics is going to help you a little bit more because it's going to tell you what you have to have within your paper. So this is just going to give you some information about that. And here is the APA format. You're going to have your running head with your title page, your number, then your uh, basically title in the center of the cover page. Then you're going to have your dem demographic information uh, and so on. Demographic. And then you're going to be responding to these questions. 
when you look at a particular client or what have you. And you're going to have the demographics for social work B as you look at that assignment. And then the interviewing questions goes here. Uh, now, one of the things that I, I really have to tell you, I look for you to apply critical thinking as you go about these assignments and not manipulating the sample that I gave you. I want you to apply critical thinking, look at uh, some questions that you would want to respond and not just say, well, I'm going to put the same question in. I'm going to do the follow example. Those were just suggested interview question topics that you can look at. Uh, paper three, well, your paper title goes here again, where you're looking at the media level, level one, you're looking at the myth, then you're looking at reality, you're going to respond. And here again, you're going to look at uh, social work A, level two, uh, social work B, level two, so you're going to be in, you're going to be looking at those. Then you're going to have your reflection and your reference. So I recommend that you read the assignment thoroughly. Ask, see what it's asking you. Uh, so let's look at step one, media. Okay, students will find two to three representative representation of a social work uh, from a variety of media sources. Uh, movie, television programs, YouTube, fiction books, or what have you. Okay, and then it says the movie, television, or other video clips. Okay, during the final class meeting time, well, this is online, so during when this, this assignment is due, you will identify the types of social work uh, medias, basically. You must include the following demographics in your paper. Okay, and then myth two kind of follows the same thing. Uh, here again, if you don't have a clear understanding of the assignment when you get near a computer, just call me and we can go through this process together. Now, I'm not here to give you answers or give you uh, directions on how to go about doing this. I'm here to answer any questions that you may have about a particular part of the assignment. So do not look for me to give you the answer uh, for the assignment, but to guide you in completing the assignment, I can definitely do that. Okay, so you need to read the direction uh, completely so you can have a clear understanding. Then you have to do a presentation and your presentation should have a cover slide uh, with the following information. Then you need to have a media slide, a miss slide, an interview question slide. So those are, it's just going to be a repeat of the assignment that you're going to actually be doing in itself. Okay, and this is just a format to look at when you look at that. So the myth on this slide, uh, share information about the myth you heard in uh, bullet points format. So what was some of the myth that you found in the media? Okay, uh, then on the other side, you have the media link. Okay, where you're gonna have uh, interview questions that you're gonna be posting on this side for both social work A and B. Okay, this is social work A, this is social work B. And then you're gonna have your reflection and your reference page. So this is going to help you get a clear understanding of the assignment. Uh, again, I must tell you, I'm, I'm here as your advisor. I'm also here as a support person for you and utilize me to help you, to help guide you through this process. Uh, don't feel that you have to come to me. You can go to some of your peers for a better understanding too, but just know that I'm here in the likelihood that you don't want to go to your peers. You know, I'd rather you go to your peers so that you can get their understanding and then come to me if you would like to, but that's totally up to you. Okay, on the other part of the syllabus, you have uh, information about limestone college policies, statement of non-discrimination. So it's very important for you to 
have a detailed reading of the assignments as a whole. And if you feel that you don't have a clear understanding of the assignment, then call me and we can talk about it a little further. That's going to exclude uh, and my discussion about the syllabus and what's in the course schedule. So the next recording that I'm going to do is a recording of what's in Blackboard and how uh, it relates to the assignments and where things are in Blackboard. So this is going to end this audio session.